As I was perusing the news, I came across a very cool article that uh, kind of reinforced something that I had found years ago. Progress update on U.S. Navy, Marines, DARPA, seaplanes. It's an article we're going to go through just a little bit about the U.S. Navy, U.S. Marine Corps initiating, develop, initiating development of seaplanes and ground effect aircraft. The sea craft. You can call them sea craft. But years ago, I came across this technology in a different form. I knew about it at, from the uh, Kronoplan, a uh, Soviet ground effect aircraft, which actually was built and tested and, and worked. And I thought it was very innovative. So be sure to hit the like and subscribe. And uh, I'm now going to show you the video that I found years ago and uh, advocated myself that this become a new a new tool in the US military's tool belt imagine a boat that glides effortlessly across the waves at three times the speed of typical marine craft getting safely to your destination with style and comfort. The Wigitworks Airfish 8 is a novel convergence of aviation technology and marine craft design. Its unique wing geometry and body structure exploits an aerodynamic phenomenon known as wing in ground effect. An aircraft experiences ground effect when it flies in close proximity to the ground producing additional lift from the increased air pressure beneath its wings. Flying above the sea's surface means that the Airfish 8 experiences no hydrodynamic drag, making it fuel efficient. Fuel consumption per mile per passenger is lower than conventional high-speed marine craft at high speed. Classified as a marine craft and powered by a car engine running on unleaded petrol, the Airfish 8 is simple to maintain and inexpensive to operate. With a payload of 1,000 kilograms, the Airfish 8 cruises at up to 90 knots with a range of 250 nautical miles. The Airfish 8 is simpler and safer compared to conventional aircraft. Its inherent aerodynamic stability and mechanical simplicity not only makes crew training quick, it also minimizes the risk of accidents caused by human error. The Airfish 8 can land immediately on the water below it with minimal control input should the need arise. The potential of the Airfish 8 is untapped and limitless. It is ideal for tourism, transport, logistics, and even maritime patrol in regions where infrastructure is limited. The Airfish 8 redefines maritime transportation with winging ground effect technology to make passage to unexploited places more convenient, safe, and fast. And I ran into that about three or four years ago, and I thought that was just an innovative piece of technology. And you heard them, logistics, maritime patrol. You can imagine this being able to insert or exfil small spec op teams, uh, small marine landing forces, to be able to resupply uh, outlying garrison. And then picture this with a, a missile or two attached to it. Uh, Anti-ship missiles. You hide these in rivers. Mangrove swamps. You're not going to spend a $30 million hypersonic missile on this thing. And yet its damage would be able to be, would be substantial. For just a few million dollars, pardon me, for just a few million dollars, you could produce craft like this, put hypersonic missiles on them, and completely decimate a Navy. Hi imagine them hiding in the Filipino archipelago the Indonesian archipelago, the Ryukyu chain of Japan. 
the small islands of Taiwan. These would be deadly. Deadly. Hard to find. Hard to hit. And yet they would be able to do all of their jobs in a logistically easy way to do it. And that is just what DARPA figured out. Now, the large aircraft you see there is the Liberty Lifter, and that'll be the final one that uh, is discussed in this article, and we're not going to go through it line by line. But what you see here in this uh, Naval News article, which, of course, will be linked, is the MC-130J Float Plane, Special Operations Command, the Regent Sea Glider, which is very similar to what you just saw with the Airfish, almost identical. And the Liberty Lifter, which I think might be the most important thing here because logistically we're going to have to supply outlying garrisons and cross vast stretches of ocean. And we are not going to be able to do it in a Liberty ship at 20 knots, 30 knots. We're just not going to be able to do it. You're going to have to have aircraft capable of carrying tons, tons of equipment across vast stretches of ocean at aircraft speeds. The first one, U.S. Special Operations Command MC-130J float plane. That looks hilarious. Those are the two biggest floats I've ever seen in my life. But I bet it would work. The Herc can do pretty much anything. It's an amazing aircraft. There'd be no reason it couldn't do this. There are limitations, but it already comes out of current stocks. You're not having to uh, build a prototype for that. You know, you're just you're pulling a couple out of service or off the assembly line, and you're just reconfiguring. Something like this, yes, has limitations. Even says so in here. But it could be available right away. It could be available right away. And uh, you just you couldn't order a seaplane from somewhere else. This is the Marine Corps' Regent Sea Glider. Sea Glider is an electric propeller hydrofoil seaplane that can transport 12 Marines and two crew. Does that not look like the Airfish? That is the Airfish. That is an electric version. It's the EV version of the Airfish. It's the EV version of the Airfish, which I, I'm torn in that I don't quite know exactly what would be better. Stop that. The EV version or the gas version, I, I lean towards gas just because of reliability and parts. If you're just going to be able to use an automobile engine, you can find, you know, a standard automobile engine. Parts will be easy, maintenance, cost will be lower, Availab <laughs> availability. When you have something like this, you want to have it available. Availability is done by logistics, being able to get parts easily, manufactured easily, transported easily. But that leads us to this. DARPA's Liberty Lifter. This is a beast. The goal was for 100 plus carrying tons. Currently, they can rate it at 72.6 tons. The requirement was that weight to specifically carry two U.S. Marine Corps armored amphibious combat vehicles. So this is meant to carry large vehicles, long distance, or great tonnage long distance. I think that the U.S. is thinking outside the box. Finally, this is the kind of outside the box thinking that I've been wanting the United States to engage in for quite a while. China outnumbers us in manpower. They outnumber us in shipbuilding cap capacity. They outnumber us in, frankly, all manufacturing capacity right now. So we have to think outside the box. We can do that. We're good at that. Will that advantage they have last forever? Probably not. The longer this goes on and the more 
realization that takes place in the Pentagon, the more we will get our act together. I'm confident. In the meantime, thinking outside the box. Thinking in a way of being able to put things everywhere. Of scattering your forces. Maximum effect through scattering of forces. Limit their ability to hit your large carrier attack group. Instead, disperse. Camouflage. Mask. Use the Filipino archipelago as the advantage it surely could be for hiding, for launching, for hit and run, for missile attacks. Our hypersonic missile range allegedly is 1,150 miles. If that's the case, you can hit anything that's going into Taiwanese waters. If it's not, if it's going to take us years to get that, you can uh, go to India and get the Brahmos. They've already sold that to Indonesia. If the Indonesians are buying Brahmos, perhaps we might want to do the same. We need to think outside the box. Trump is already talking about bidding our our new uh, constellation class frigates to the Koreans. So this isn't on out of the out of the box. This isn't out of the out of the question. To think outside the box and perhaps acquire from other nations, utilize their construction yards to use different tactics than we did in World War II. Generals are great at fighting the last war. The aircraft carrier is useful. We are in the age of the missile. And are you going to use a $50 million hypersonic missile on this? Because that seemed kind of a waste. And if that thing can hide in rivers, mangrove swamps, small islands, scattered throughout, a couple of uh, large missiles itself, you don't stand a chance. You don't stand a chance. I'm glad to see the United States thinking outside the box. Everything will be linked. I do appreciate you. And I thank you.